Hey folks, welcome to today's episode of The Daily Doink. I'm your host, Eugene Runkis. And today, what we're going to be talking about is magnetism, or at least my understanding of magnetism. And I, I've invented some really intelligent machines with magnets, and I'm trying to get patents on some of those machines. And that's what we're going to explore today, is the, the design principles behind these machines that I hope to get patents for. And first thing off the bat, what I'd like to show you is this neodymium uh, ball magnet that I have here. It's a super, super strong neodymium magnet. Yeah, it's really heavy. It's heavy. The special thing about these ball magnets is they're capable of doing something really curious and strange that other conventional magnets don't do. And if you look at this photo that I've drawn out here, you can see that I, I've taken a ball magnet and I've, I've put two slots on it. And those slots kind of correlate to the, the magnetic poles. There's one slot. That goes on the top side where the North Pole is, and there's another one on the bottom where the where the South Pole is. And what I did for this experiment is um, I I cut those slots into the magnet, and then I pressed copper wire into them. Yeah, just press copper wire into the slots. And of course, you know what that does is it it uh, it projects the magnetic force outward. The copper uh, projects a magnetic force, and the reason why I wanted to do that is to um, alter the magnetic footprint of the magnet itself, so that it would have uh, a, a powerful, strong magnetic region and a weak magnetic region that correlated to the the north and south poles on both on both poles. You know, have a have a weak south and a strong south, and have a weak north and a strong north. That was the principle, anyway. So that's what I did. I did some significant testing on uh, various uh, magnetic pile arrangements. And um, what I discovered is that the, uh, you know, a fractured magnet uh, arrangement um, does precisely that. It, uh, it produces uh, magnetic loops very much like our sun produces magnetic loops. And some of those magnetic loops are petite in force, you know, or they're weak. And then other uh, magnetic loops that this arrangement produces are, you know, very strong magnetic loops. And then, you know, they project a significant distance away from the magnet itself. And you may ask yourself, what, what's that useful for? I mean, why would I want to do that? And what my interest is, and uh, making magnetic motors, magnet motors. And, you know, the, the conventional magnetic motor today, the conventional magnetic motor today requires an electrical charge to provide the, the energy that the uh, rotor needs to spin inside the magnet, you know, inside the motor and make the, the magnet produce electricity. So what, what this idea that I have here is I would like to I would like to use the, the magnetic force of a really strong magnet itself to do that job. I know. So so I'd like to use the, the force of a magnet itself to do that job instead of using electricity to move the motor. And I know the first thing you're gonna say is conservation of you know conservation of energy. I, I know. But I can assure you, that's not a problem with a magnet. Magnets don't do that. Get an education. As you can see in this other drawing right here that I have, um, this is a, a fractured magnetic pile, and you can see it has four major quadrants, where um, on one side, the, the North Pole quadrant, it's been split in half, so it has you know, it has a, a strong 
magnetic north uh, pole right there and uh, on the bottom side it does the same thing there's a there's a strong and a weak south pole because I've, I've split the magnet in half so what that does is space the magnets apart so that they have the highest amount of tension in between them you know they have high pressure because they have a slight space in between them with a, a, a magnetic amplifier or a magnetic deadener on one side and kept the quarter hole on the other side so what that does is it alters the magnetic signature of the structure itself and what that does is it, is it enables me to use electromagnets to react with those strong magnetic lobes and the weak magnetic lobes to cause that magnet to spin. So essentially any any movement in the magnet itself generates an electrical charge that powers up the the electromagnets that, that help influence how the magnet moves around. I'd like to take a moment to explain this model to you. As you can see, it's a, a ball and socket electric motor that I've been talking about. And buried inside the cap, you can see there's coils that correspond to the positive and negative that run back and forth to complete the circuit that way. And But the shell, the shell of this is comprised of magnets on the outside. It's a magnetic pile. Okay. So now having that explained, I'll take this out of the center. See the bottom half is just more of the same thing. And the ball portion of it, you can see it's a magnetic pile also. You can see the copper wiring that actually comes out from the surface. These are uh, contact points. These are contact points that actually convey the electrical current inside the ball. And as you can see, inside the ball, there's actually more coils in there to commutate the electricity to the ball itself. And even though this is a magnetic pile also, um, the electricity travels through the ball, through these contactors, and then, then it makes its way into the coils in this magnetic pile and then you know after the electrical current is generated then it's uh, commutated to a battery or you know, to diodes or a capacitor um, you know whatever the designer chooses to use and so I believe this this type of you know magnetic pile motor like this is ball and socket motor like this is going to be extremely effective and extremely efficient because it doesn't use fuel it uses the magnetic pressure of neodymium magnets uh, to provide the force of its motion and um, that of course has to be supported with electromagnets that are um, uh, you know they can be built into this unit also and, you know, so some testing has to be done there to come up with the most efficient method of doing that. But, as you can see in this drawing right here, um, you know, there's a magnetic pile, you know, with the coils in it. Here's the, the, the magnetic ball in the center of it. Uh, you know, it's a, basically a fractured magnet configuration, and it has coils in it. You know, that, that gets connected to the uh, uh, contact points you know that are distributed out through there and the electricity is uh, fed deep you know into the uh, conveyance part of the machine where it's uh, where the voltage is adjusted it's a 
you know, run through a capacitor and then into a storage battery. And from there it can be used. So realistically, realistically, um, I, I think you know this is going to be a, a really, really good tool if I can, if I can just master the method of building one. Okay, so basically, it's three major parts. You, know, you have the, the top, the upper and lower uh, cage, and then you have the, the ball that goes in the center, the ball and socket. And just to reiterate, you know, there's uh, coils here and coils here that, that connect. See, these, these are all contact points. So when the cube is put together, the, the, the electricity goes all the way around, you know, goes all the way around like it's supposed to. And then it, it also, it also circulates through the inside of the ball magnet too. You know, it has a magnet shell on the outside. That's a, a fractured magnet, so that it has multi-various uh, magnetic loop lines that Magnetic loop lines, so that it has a grand and a petite magnetic magnetic loop. And what that does is it, it makes it so that the the ball, you know, the, the ball magnet, can never come to rest inside this magnetic cage. Because no matter no matter what which position it takes, it's always going to have a, a fulcrum pressure working against it, where it's going to uh, make it turn. And there's two two ways it can do it. It can it can uh, list, you know, revolve on kind of like a random random path and produce the electricity, or it can it can gyrate on a on a single plane and rotate really fast. And, you know, if it's uh, uh, gyrating in orbit, uh, that'll generate the electricity. So I'm not real sure which uh, which configuration this exact model will take. I think this one uh, will spin in the same direction really quickly. Right here, of course, on both of them you see the positive and negative wire taps. That's where the actual wires would solder onto this machine and come out of it. And uh, you know, this is where you pick up your electricity at. contact points around the circle right there when the two halves are put together they they all make contact with each other and that, that causes the electricity to, to flow all the way around all the way around and then of course you know this is uh, just embedded in, in magnets so it has a you know, really heavy magnetic force acting on acting on the ball and the ball of course produces you know, strong magnetic force also. We're using the type of neodymium magnet that I have now. It's uh, about 500 gauss is what the strength of the magnet is. So that's what I'm working with right now. You know, most common uh, refrigerator magnets are about 100 gauss or, you know, just over a thousand uh, micro Tesla units. So, but the magnets I'm using are, uh, you know, 55,280 micro Tesla units, or, or about 500 gallons. So you're saying it's a cascade? Just always remember folks, when you're dealing with magnets, red is north and white is always south. So that's what you see in this little model right here. You see the magnetic file configuration where the south magnets are forced together and the north magnets are forced together to strengthen the magnetic loop that they make. And there's a little drawing in the bottom left corner, you can see a little diode sticking up out of the center with a couple wires. You know, that kind of conveys the idea that I had. 
to uh, uh, electrify the, the ball inside of a cube. And yeah, that's kind of like playing craps to, to some people. But to me, it's a really intelligent in technology and it's just an advancement to uh, the existing magnetic motors that we currently have today, like these motors I'm showing you right now. And these neodymium magnets are really good at doing work. They're, they're super strong. And they're really, really powerful. You see how it grabs onto the metal lid. And they're so powerful, in fact, they'll even attach themselves to a stone that has uh, a small amount of iron content, like you see right here. So those magnets will do a lot of work. And because I can force an organized loop arrangement with these magnets, I can do some really amazing things as far as making them do work. So putting it into its simplest terms, I'm converting force into energy by utilizing the magnetic moment of the magnet. And also I should add that the ball that floats inside the cage, that magnetic ball, is suspended in a magnetic field. And uh, in some areas it's a hard magnetic field, and in some areas it's a soft magnetic field. And that's the key to making the ball turn inside, otherwise it would experience a tidal lock and just freeze in place. But it can't do that because it has electromagnets that are influencing the rotation of ball magnet and also um, it, it has the hard and soft magnetic loop regions that prevent it from staying in one place so it has to rotate. Now, I've always wanted to harness the immense energy that's expended during a, a magnetic flip when it's occurring you know, when the magnet is actually flipping there's a lot of power going off there and uh, I've always wanted to harness that energy and use it for something productive, and this machine comes really, really close to doing that. One thing I do know is that if we keep using fossil fuels and regular fuels and stuff like that, gasoline and nuclear fuel, we're not going to make good advancements in generating electricity. But I think using magnets, there's a definite future in using magnets. As much fun as these Stirling engines are, I really want to make a magnet operator motor just like what you're seeing right here instead of heated air making the motor move I want to use the fulcrum of a magnet and that's what I'm trying to do I know, that never gets old. That's a Sterling engine. So if you like this content and you'd like to see more, you can look up Eugene Runkis forward slash patreon.com and see more of this kind of material over there. Thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Eugene Runkus.